Oh, what was I worried about it? It does fit, just so. There's that. <laughs> I'm trying to be discreet. Sneak in. <laughs> Sneak in. Collect all of Bluebird's coffee grounds. Oh yeah? What are we doing with those? Compost. Putting them in the garden. It's all fertility, man. Uh, we're setting up on the old mushroom farm and um, it's, uh, yeah, we're just going to be doing some gardening. It's all about veg. It's all about um, taking self-sufficiency further. We're all beginners. We're all just uh, trying to have a good time and be uh, yeah, more self-responsible, produce our own food. There's so many reasons we do it, but that's awesome. We've got our nice uh, fertility addition here to keep things going. Nice one. Uh, and a couple of others we do as well. And uh, it's turning out to be a beautiful garden. Hey, magic, man! And if uh, if I live somewhere else, like Joburg or California or Timbuktu, how do I follow along, bro? Is there an Insta page or? You can follow along on Instagram. Okay, cool. Um, I'd recommend moving though. That would be better. That would be better. Move to Midlands. Come, come here. Oh, okay. But if you can't do that, that's unsustainable. So then there's then there's then there's Instagram. <laughs> then there's Instagram, um, and maybe other stuff as well. Magic dude. But we don't like doing that. <laughs> we like to do that as little as possible. <laughs> but, Magic. But we'll try our hardest. So we'll, we'll see you for some gardening lessons on Saturday. Mm, and I'll see you for some coffee in five minutes. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's so many great espresso machines in the world today, um, but I don't know, like since I learned about coffee, since I started working with coffee as a home barista, and then starting a roastery and then a coffee bar, Lamazaco for me has been like, I don't know, like it's just, you know, some people are into Ferraris and some people are into Lamborghinis. I just freaking love Lamazaco, I don't know what it is about them. Um, yeah, it's just like, I, I don't know what it is about them, I just absolutely love the machine, I love the, the history of them, I love the way that they're doing things and um, yeah, I think there are more technologically advanced machines out there on paper, but in reality, these these are just absolute workhorses of the industry and they do a great job. So I think, uh, like very, very much like cars, like Lamborghinis, Ferraris, that sort of thing, you buy into a brand. Yeah. It's not necessarily all about the product itself. But it's about the brand ethos, it's the design, it's the technology, it's how they treat their staff. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's more of a holistic approach to the brand itself than the act actual machine. Yeah. So for me, the first interaction that I had with Lamazaco was at the Factory Cafe when it was still in Gale Street in Durban. <coughs> and they had a, a Linear Classic and I remember walking in and it was this those straight lines, stainless steel with the red logo and I was like, wow, it's a good looking machine. And obviously the coffee that Kyle and the team were producing at that time was amazing. So it was really like the most amazing first experience with the machine and the coffee. Jeez, how good was that bar? It was beautiful. Yeah, Matt, yeah, it was, just it was beautiful. It had so much character. Space. Yeah, I did live in that space because I was studying and finishing my degree when yeah. we were still in Gale Street. And I used to go there every day and abuse their Wi-Fi and just drank coffee all day. Um, and yeah, like I said, that, that was my first interaction with Lamazaco. And then when I worked at a, at a coffee bar, I was lucky enough to have a couple. And they were just always my brand of choice. And it was the design aspect, but it was also the technology and the care and the attention to detail and the, I think really what sets Lamazaco apart from not all manufacturers, but certainly some manufacturers, is 
when they release new machines, they really do try to push the boundaries mm. of what they can do. And they're always looking to innovate. When they release a new machine, they don't just release something with a new case and a new shell. For sure. It's, it's always pushing something different, like a straight in quarter filter or you know, PID or even the horizontal boiler. You know, Jim Amazon yeah. patented the first horizontal really, boiler yeah. in a coffee machine. Yeah. For me, Dual what's boilers. interesting is like the, the tech side of it is all fascinating, but the thing is like, as far as you know, multi boiler machines go, like a dual boiler machine, they're, they're all pretty good. But what I love about this machine is the fact, well, what sold me on it actually is that, like, all our heroes use these machines, like even the PV. So we had, we had a choice. So, like, the, the way we ended up with an orange PV is actually that's a, quite a funny story. Um, <laughs> because we, some of you know the story already, but we didn't intend to open a coffee bar. So we moved into a new roastery in the Midlands and we, I wanted to start like an experience based space in the front of our roastery, like literally half of the size of our coffee bar. And the idea was to use our little GS3 that we had at the time yeah. and then like have a big manual brew set up and we we're just going to do like Friday afternoons at the roastery kind of thing um, and not commit to like, you know, any fixed hours or anything like that. And let's just say that. It's Things kind of changed. evolved since then. Yeah. <laughs> and on the first weekend, we did like uh, the team hammered out like a hundred, almost a hundred coffees on day one out of a single group GS3. And needless to say, Sinjin got a call like the next day, like Sinjin, do we need an espresso machine? <laughs> so obviously lockdown and all the rest of it. They just delay after delay, yeah. delay after delay. Yeah. And there were no machines available, so we got like a, a list of potential machines, and I wanted a PB. Um, and the only PB available was orange, <laughs> and we're bluebird. Yeah, but so, but having said that, like it's worked out amazingly. So we got like a few nice little extras, and maybe we'll maybe we'll do a proper review on the PB. Like if you're interested in that, you know, let us know in the comments. Um, but maybe we do like a full rundown. I can talk about it from my experience and what we and our team's experience of using this machine so far. There's some really cool tech that I'm loving. Um, something simple like the auto back flush function. Yeah, holy moly, what yeah. a game changer for closing up at the end of the day. But you know, by now maybe you've seen some B-roll or you will of us receiving this machine and I just need to give a huge shout out to this man. Sinjin found out on Friday that our machine was going to sit at the Korea's depot down in Durban and he was like, no it's not, it's going to sit there until Monday and he's like, no it isn't. And he jumped in a bucky, a borrowed bucky <laughs> yeah. and drove down to Pantan, fetched the machine, brought it back up here to us which is like an hour and 20 minutes away or whatever. And um, yeah, we've got this magic piece of equipment on bar for the weekend, so thanks Sinjin. No, no problem at all. The real person to thank behind all of this is, of course, George. Absolutely. Uh, from Equipment Cafe. Um, he... is a legend. He's a legend, obviously. The Greek god of coffee equipment. We almost got a KB90, but... but yeah, it was yeah. only three phase, and George was like, stuff it, I'm not changing all No, the, shame. Sad, so. But George, um, <laughs> George obviously pulled finger to get this machine yeah. here in time. Um, yeah. And yeah, big thank you to you, George. Absolutely, thanks, George. Um, but other than that, congratulations on your beautiful new piece of equipment. Do you have to take the bar to the next level? Yeah, thank you. I must be honest, like when I started Bluebird, if you told me they would have a linear PV, I would not have believed you. This is like, you know, it's been a really fast two years and this is one hell of a dream machine. And if we never move on from here, I'll be, I'll be happy. <laughs> I know we probably will, but if we never do, I'll be happy for life. And if I can say the orange, although not planned, fits in quite well with the space and it, it gives the machine a character. I mean, I'd, I'd like to say my favorite milk jug is also orange, so I don't know <laughs> what it is about orange. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks for No problem, thanks for to try and fit 500 grams of coffee into a 250 gram bag 
and I've got this good solution before I start grinding. And then just alter the label size and naturally it should be able to take more. Marker, scratch the 250, make it 500 and we should be in business. Oh, shivers. Nervous. Oh, perfect. Saving the environment one overfull bag at a time. Yo, that definitely won't feel. <laughs> Uh, I mean, just tape balance it carefully in the car and it won't spill. 